floor, uh, from Washington is now recognized the presenter amendment. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Administration by Democrats and Republicans. It has been used to parole in Cuban. Point of order reserved by the gentleman from Arizona. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute. Without objection, the amendment is uh, uh, considered as read. The, the gentleman from, uh, from Washington is now recognized the presenter amendment. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Unable to pass their cruel and inhumane border bill, H.R. 2, into law, it appears that Republicans are now attempting to give state attorneys generals the authority to try and stop the Biden administration from carrying out important policy priorities by giving them standing to sue in federal court under a variety of sections in the Immigration and Nationality Act. The ranking member in the last amendment already discussed how this entire bill is likely unconstitutional and how some of the provisions in this bill are direct attempts to overturn U.S. v. Texas. This was a case where Texas tried to gut the president's policy of prioritizing DHS's limited resources on individuals who pose a public safety threat. My amendment would focus on a different section, the use of humanitarian parole. My amendment would remove the section that would give states standing to sue and attempt to block any administration's use of parole. Parole is an important humanitarian and foreign policy tool that allows individuals to enter the country more expeditiously in urgent circumstances. The power to parole people into this country has been used by the executive branch since President Eisenhower's administration by Democrats and Republicans. It has been used to parole in Cubans and Haitians during the Mariel boat lift, as well as for Filipino World War II veterans and for Hungarians fleeing communism. This administration has used parole to address a variety of crises around the world. Under the Uniting for Ukraine parole program, over 175,000 Ukrainians have been temporarily paroled into the United States as they sought safety from Russia's unprovoked war of aggression. The administration also used parole after the fall of Kabul to keep our promise to the many Afghans who aided our troops over the 20-year conflict there. And most recently, parole has been used to alleviate pressure on the southern border through the Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, and Nicaragua parole program, which started in January 2023. All these parole programs are not unlawful, despite my colleagues' claims. While classes of individuals are invited to apply for parole under these programs, each application is adjudicated on a case-by-case -case basis as required by statute. Despite that, Republicans attempted to essentially end all these programs and overall decimate the broad parole power traditionally left to the executive branch in H.R. 2. Knowing that the bill, that bill is going nowhere, Republicans have now turned to the courts. Texas and 20 other states have a lawsuit pending against the Department of Homeland Security attempting to stop the administration's Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela parole program. One of the big questions in that lawsuit is whether the states have standing to sue over such a program. Clearly, my Republican colleagues are worried once again that Texas does not have standing or this provision would not be included. It's important to note how successful the CHNV parole program has been in creating what Americans want, which is an orderly process for migrants to come to the United States. No one wants to make the dangerous trek to the southern border. We have seen time and time again, when given a chance to come in an orderly way, people will choose to come through a legal pathway. And we've seen this play out in real time. In late 2022, the number of Cubans, Haitians, and Nicaraguans crossing between ports of entry was on the rise. However, since the implementation of the Cuban, Haitian, Nicaraguan, Venezuelan parole program in January of 2023, encounters of Cubans, Haitians, and Nicaraguans between ports of entry are down over 90%. We have also seen how the reverse can happen. President Donald Trump did all he could to decimate the legal immigration system. For example, when the Trump administration cut off refugee processing from the Congo, we started seeing Congolese refugees at the southern border where we had never seen them before. By attempting to end this vital parole program, my Republican colleagues are showing us once again what we have heard for this whole hearing. They are not interested in solutions. They don't want to work in a bipartisan way to address the situation at the border by fixing the underlying system, nor by giving Border Patrol the resources that it needs. Instead, 
They said the quiet part out loud. Donald Trump did, many Republicans on the other side did. They want to keep a broken immigration system out there as a campaign issue. They want to scapegoat and fearmonger about immigrants and immigration. Ending the ability of this administration and future administrations to use parole will create chaos and dysfunction at the border. I hope my colleagues will support my amendment and I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy. Uh, I thank the chairman. Um, I would note that we've had a number of conversations about the legislation of the Senate. I associate myself with the remarks of the gentleman from North Carolina that the legislation from the Senate was very specifically designed to deflect uh, by my Democratic colleagues their utter and complete failure when it comes to the border. Uh, that is precisely why that bill was done. It was done heading into an election season knowing full well that it would fail, had zero chance of success, so they could try to pass the buck. The fact is it was flawed on numerous levels. Uh, specifically, it would have codified President Biden's failed asylum rule, which eliminates the adversary component of immigration proceedings, meaning ICE attorneys are no longer part of the process, eliminating cross-examination. Catch and release it specifies that migrants who cannot be detained will be released and placed under the supervision of, quote, alternative det detention programs. It would have codified releases, which was, flies directly in the face of the requirement to detain. It would have enshrined floras for family units and unaccompanied alien children. Uh, the bill mandates families released in the interior under alternatives to detention and maintains the status quo of releasing unaccompanied alien children. And by the way, those numbers didn't even apply to the outrageous caps that set the standard flow close to 5,000, which would have meant 1.8 million per year. It put lawyers in place for, for illegal aliens to the tune of $350 million. Parole, it would have codified and expanded the unlawful use of parole the unlawful use, which flies in the face of what the gentlelady was just describing, because in the statute, the specific language, the specific language says, in his discretion, parole in the United States temporarily under such conditions as he may prescribe only on a case-by-case -case basis. This whole notion of categorical parole flies directly in the face of what the statutes contemplate, literally in black letter text, and the administration ignores it. And they do so intentionally. And they do so in such a way that floods the zone so that we end up with situations like we had a 1,000 illegal aliens from Venezuela rushed and nearly breached the El Paso port of entry. We've had numerous situations constantly dealing with the border because this administration is blatantly disregarding the specific text of the law. The Senate bill would have codified this mass migration uh, efforts by the administration. They did it intentionally. That's why the Senate Democrats wanted that. Yep. They did it on purpose so that my colleagues can do exactly what they're doing in this hearing, trying to deflect their failure that is causing untold damage to the American people, causing untold deaths of fentanyl poisonings to the children, including in my district, where I represent the number of people throughout the state of Texas that are suffering as a consequence of this, the amount of money that Texans are having to spend, the extent to which DPS and our troopers are having to spend time at the border doing the job the federal government refuses to do. And very importantly, with all due respect to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who said otherwise, the extent to which Border Patrol agents are delighted, delighted that we impeached my orcas, are delighted that Governor Abbott sent people down to the border to do what the federal government won't do. They are so thankful, calling us specifically and saying, thank you for doing that. Thank you for putting the razor wire down there. Thank you for standing up in Eagle Pass. And thank you for impeaching my orcas because they're sick of it. They're sick of a secretary who lied about them, who literally knew and had a briefing specifically that there was no whipping of Haitian migrants, and yet went to the microphone and perpetuated that false trope that somehow these Hispanic, overwhelmingly Hispanic Border Patrol agents were acting racist and <laughs> saying they were whipping Haitian migrants, which was clearly false based on every photo that was put forward. That is your Secretary of Homeland Security. That is the face of the Biden administration. And that is what my Democratic colleagues want to run away from because they know it's a complete and total failure. They know that it's why the president is polling completely in the toilet 
because the entire nation knows that wide open borders is endangering the American people, endangering the very migrants that my Democratic colleagues say they want to support in the false name of compassion, while they get sold into the sex trafficking trade, get abused by cartels, end up dying along the Rio Grande River, dying on ranches, while ranchers have to find dead bodies on those ranches in Texas, and then they want to come in here and say that my friend from North Carolina is somehow flawed for wanting to say we want to make sure that states have the power under the Constitution to go before a court and say they demand redress for the fact that the federal government refuses to do its job. Yes, we impeach the secretary. Yes, we should be able to go into court to enforce the laws that are put before us to make sure that our country is safe and to make sure that we can do the job that the federal government refuses to do. I yield back. ...of prioritizing DHS's limited resources on individuals who are in U.S. v. Texas. This was a case where Texas tried to gut the president's policy started in January 2023. All these parole programs are to enter the country more expeditiously in urgent circumstances. The power to parole to keep our promise to the many Afghans who aided our troops over the is an important humanitarian and foreign policy tool that allows individuals